topic a little bit here. So I think what I'm is kind of start at the beginning and talk about wiki pages and what an import is and um, how to find data, um, how to convert that data into something that is OSM uh, useful for OSM, I guess. And then um, how to take that data and convert it into something that is manageable to import. Um, maybe I'll start off with a little bit more about who I am. So I, I, um, I am probably the reason that there is a imports um, guidelines um, back in 2000, 12 or so, probably a little bit before then, um, I imported a bunch of buildings in Chicago. And um, that caught the eye of um, the legacy people of OpenStreetMap who didn't, who noticed that there was a big change uh, in the amount of data that was going into OpenStreetMap at the time. And um, there, there, I don't remember there being guidelines at the time, but um, after I started, there became guidelines. And um, so working th around and through those guidelines uh, is kind of uh, another topic here that I can talk about. Um, I've been on the OpenStreetMap US board for several years. I am not currently, I should rephrase how I say that. Um, but I've participated in OpenStreetMap since 2006 or so, and so um, have been, you've probably run into my um, very early USGS imports uh, back in the good old days uh, when nobody really knew what was going on. Um, so that's, that is another topic that we could talk about, <laughs> but um, I guess you could say that I have a lot of experience getting data um, outside of OpenStreetMap into OpenStreetMap. Um, so I'm happy to talk about it more. So uh, let's see here. I think a good thing to do here would be to start off with um, sharing my screen and Can you guys see my screen? I bet you can't. Yeah, okay, good. I can see. Awesome. Mac OS said I would need to restart, but I don't have to. All right, so um, I think a, a good place to start is uh, somebody asked what an import even is. And um, that's a really good question because there's a lot of data out in the world and it's kind of um, a blurry line when you think about uh, if you're just using that data to do mapping or if you're importing that data. And I think that that confusion kind of lays at the root of why imports are so controversial in OpenStreetMap. Um, OpenStreetMap has always been a, a place for people to do mapping with their hands and making, uh, making changes based on your observations, whether that's on the ground or um, with satellite imagery or aerial imagery. Um, it, it has been the cornerstone of OpenStreetMap and the, the crowdsource nature of the data for a long time. And I think, uh, especially in the US, but increasingly elsewhere in the world, there's a bunch of data out there where other folks who are uh, just as good at digitizing data as OpenStreetMap folks are, have spent countless hours uh, doing that and generating data in a format and in places that aren't OpenStreetMap. And so I think to me, what an import is, is taking data that somebody else put together and bringing it wholesale into OpenStreetMap. And I guess uh, wholesale, maybe doing a little bit more work than I mean there, but uh, what I mean is that you, 
an input to me is when you're taking data and um, not making significant changes to it. Maybe you uh, are merging two data sets and uh, two external data sets and putting them together into a, a new third data set that you're then importing into OpenStreetMap. And um, I, so I think that, that that's kind of my definition of imports is you're taking significant data from outside OpenStreetMap and bringing it in. Um, not to like belabor this too much, but to me, if you are a GIS professional who has spent who has spent your time um, mapping in Esri software or whatever, and you're trying to contribute to OpenStreetMap um, using that data that you've previously mapped, I I don't so from a from a technical standpoint, in that there's work, there's importing work that you need to do, that's probably an import. But from a, po a political and policy standpoint, I don't think that that's an import. Um, I think uh, either way, there's a lot of people that have a lot of different opinions on it. And an important bit of context, I think, is that uh, the folks who are the loudest about, op about imports and import policies are the folks who um, have been around the longest and have seen OpenStreetMap change the most from its initial beginnings as a purely hand-drawn map to a map that contains data from all over the place, including imports. And I think um, the policies that are that shaped around that are are coming from folks who have very good intentions for OpenStreetMap, but are um, trying to uh, come up with ways to make it so that it's um, so that the the data that you're importing into OpenStreetMap fits in with the rest of the ecosystem. So. Um, since the OpenStreetMap ecosystem is so um, wishy-washy, these policies can be wishy-washy, and the, the process of getting that data into OpenStreetMap can be very tricky. So that's where a lot of folks, I think, I imagine everybody who's uh, worked on an import, and especially the folks who, have, who mentioned they were working on an import for several years, I feel like that might be uh, why it feels like a lot of work to do, not just because of the technical parts, but because of the politics, the politics and the policy uh, around it. So having said that though, um, it's totally worth uh, going through the process of converting the data that you care about and uh, seeing how hard it would be to merge with existing OpenStreetMap data and seeing uh, if it would be uh, still useful to OpenStreetMap community, all that sort of thing. Um, and how much work it would be for you as the importer to uh, build up a, a community um, uh, consensus around whether or not this data would be useful for OpenStreetMap. So um, I guess that's a very long way of saying Imports are hard but necessary, I think, or hard but useful to OpenStreetMaps. Uh, ongoing usefulness <laughs> to everybody. Um, so I think uh, hopefully that helps answer what an import is. Um, I think another uh, topic that we could look at here is, is whipping through the import guidelines real quick. Um, the so this wiki page is is rather well done, and um, I encourage anybody who is thinking about doing an import or even who has done an import um, to visit this page um, because it it changes and um, like best practices get added to this, and um, it gradually becomes less. Uh, less confusing, I guess is one way of putting it. So um, a lot of this stuff that I was talking about here is, is kind of listed 
Um, I think one of the more controversial parts about this um, was, or I guess still is, uh, the community um, process. So um, I guess when you, when you start talking about doing an import with OpenStreetMap uh, community members, one of the things that they're going to ask you is how you plan on importing the data. And um, one of the things that they'll ask about is if you plan on bringing people together to do the work of importing the data. Um, and I think that that is what people used to think community buy-in is. Um, and I, to me, um, I think community buy-in means that we get, that we let people know in the area, in the geographic or uh, community area. So like if you're importing cycle stuff, you want to talk to cycling people. And if you're importing in Chicago, you want to talk to Chicago people. Um, you want to let them know that you're planning on doing this. You want to find out um, who, uh, find out if there's any feedback on the, the way that you're doing this. But one thing that, that you probably don't need to worry about as much is um, finding people to help you do the actual data import. And um, I don't know that that's still a huge issue, but it used to be that that would completely block an import. Um, people would say, if you're not working with at least three or four people, um, you can't do this import. And I think that that um, I, I think that that has kind of become less important. But um, the the reason that I think that's that shouldn't be uh, a blocker is because to me um, convincing people to map in OpenStreetMap is a lot of work, and then uh, importing is tedious and not interesting work usually. And so trying to convince somebody to map in OpenStreetMap by doing an import usually puts them off OpenStreetMap and makes it so they don't really want to come back. And so whenever I try to, whenever I'm thinking about doing an import, I usually try to imagine the amount of work that it would take to do myself. And that's what, that's one of the ways that I think about um, deciding whether or not it's a good idea to do an import. Um, an important step is the license approval. This one, um, as time has gone on, this is a, a this is a, a popular way of of making it very hard to get um, data imported. Basically, there are no licenses that um, uh, that are compatible with the OpenStreetMap license other than ODBL, which is OpenStreetMap's license. And so what that means is you have to talk to and get written permission to use the data of um, whatever organization you're use, getting data from. And um, generally in the United States, an important thing to think about here is that uh, in the United States, government data is generally considered to be not copyrighted unless there's some um, license that is a, a, that explicitly prevents you from using the data outside of whatever website you're looking at it in. Um, and the reason that that's important is because if you reach out to a GIS professional, uh, like your county GIS person, um, and say to them, um, I'm from OpenStreetMap, I'm a volunteer at OpenStreetMap, and I'd like to import your building data, or I'd like to get your address points data so that I can import it. Um, they'll say, okay, here you go, here's a file, and they'll send you a file, and then 
it will not have, usually it won't have any license information along with it. And so you'll say, ah, um, I need some sort of license approval or some sort of document that says um, uh, that it's okay that OpenStreetMap can use this data. And um, usually, unless uh, this person has interacted with OpenStreetMap before, they're gonna either not reply to you or get very confused because um, they're not lawyers and they don't wanna say things that sound lawyerly when their city might, uh, basically they don't wanna represent their city in a court of law. And so they're gonna be very shy about, usually very shy about licensing questions. And um, on the other hand, OpenStreetMap folks who are going to be looking at your uh, import proposal are going to be asking these kind of questions and usually they're from Europe and they don't understand the concept of uh, the, the way that copyright works in the United States in that uh, collections of facts aren't copyrightable. So um, there's a little bit of a, this is another step <laughs> along the process where it can become very difficult to work through. Um, there are, uh, uh, what's the word? There's a waiver, I believe here, that I believe is in this getting permission thing. Um, so it's basically, all of these letters are for uh, getting data um, under a specific license. So you might have to modify these a little bit um, and make them less confusing to people. But th the goal is that you uh, want to get somebody in the organization uh, where you're getting data from to give you permission, basically. And um, some of these are a little more legalese than uh, you need. You might just say, can you give us permission to use this data in OpenStreetMap? Usually that's okay. Um, but then keep in mind that it might, might also trigger people uh, talking to their lawyer in the city and, and that might balloon. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then, uh, the the last step here in the pre, uh, like the things that you have to put together before you uh, talk to others about basically is, a, is documentation about uh, what data you're importing, how you're working on it, um, who you're working on it with, and if anybody, and how you're planning on importing it. All of that stuff, once you're done with it, you get, uh, you can send an email to um, the imports mailing list or to the one of the local uh, mailing lists. Um, you can also talk to the Slack uh, channel, the OpenStreetMap US Slack has an imports channel that is pretty darn friendly when it comes to imports and, and offering feedback. Um, and, um, Usually, so in the last couple of years, what I've seen is people will put together an imports proposal and then send it off to the email, uh, to the mailing list or talk about it. And then um, it, it just kind of fizzles and, or you don't really hear anything, um, I guess is a better way of putting it. So usually you're not gonna hear any feedback unless there's something uh, immediately obvious that should be changed. And it's okay that you don't get immediate feedback or that you don't get um, any feedback on the mailing list. Usually in OpenStreetMap, uh, silence is consent and you should take it that way. So um, if you don't hear back from somebody in a, a few days, then you probably are good to go. And you can point to, if somebody comes along and, and complains about your future data load into OpenStreetMap, you can point at your communications and, and wiki pages that you did as evidence that you that you tried. Um, and then this is kind of where it gets uh, pretty technical. 
And um, as part of, like it says here, follow your plan and track your progress. Um, as part of doing those things, and as part of building your plan, um, you will get feedback about how to uh, how to do the upload in a way that doesn't break things or makes it more convenient for folks who are watching the map and um, makes it more convenient for people who, if you make a mistake, they can uh, revert your changes. Um, and then it's interesting that this is on here, letting people know that you're done. Um, I don't think that I've ever heard anybody say that they're done with an import on, on a thread. So that that's an important thing. And um, it would, it, it's interesting to be able to, to look at people's completed imports. And so if you ever finish one, um, it's definitely a good idea to let people know. So um, let's see here. I kind of whipped through that pretty quick. Um, I think the the other thing that I wanted to um, talk about here was finding data. Maybe I'll touch on this real quick. Um, but basically, um, it's part of part of doing an import is finding data that's useful and interesting to OpenStreetMap. And there's a couple interesting tools that I use to to do that data prospecting, as I like to call it. Um, is Brian Housel on the line? I bet he's not. Um, so uh, ArcGIS and Esri have, sorry, Esri has an ArcGIS hub, which is their open data portal. And you can do data searches on there. Um, so for example, here's address points. Uh, here's building footprints. And um, Basically, any data that a local um, organization has decided to put on ArcGIS Hub is fairly easy to get down onto uh, into a data format that's OpenStreetMap compatible. So for example, uh, you might click on this guy here and see building footprints. Um, I literally just clicked this and there was a map up here. Um, so up here, there's usually a map that tells you, um, that shows you where the data is on the earth. And um, you can see when it was last updated. That's an important thing. Um, oh, it's because it's a shape file. Let me go back here. Let's try this one. There we go. Um, and then for some data, um, specifically ones that are feature layers, but not all data, um, it will, give you a list of attributes here. And I'm clicking too fast. And the reason that the, the list of attributes is useful is because um, you want to try and find data that has useful attributes to OpenStreetMap. So having um, having just the geometry is useful, but not as useful as having the geometry and the address. So if you're able to find data that has both of those things, that makes the data vastly more interesting and useful in OpenStreetMap. So for example, here is um, the, these attributes here show me that there's no address data, but there might be building type. And so um, that would be probably things like if it's a, um, if it's a detached house or a um, gazebo or a garage or something like that. So as you're looking through data and finding data, imagine how you're gonna convert that data into OpenStreetMap tags and think about if other people would find that information useful. For example, this shape.st area and st length, these are just computed numbers that aren't interesting to OpenStreetMap consumers. And so we would wanna make sure and not include those when we do an import. Um, this year, for example, looks interesting. This might be the year that the building was 
uh, built. That might be interesting as a an OSM start date. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you're as you're looking around for data. Um, I encourage you to look for data that's local to you. So for example, um, mostly because when it's local to you, that means it's more, uh, you'll know when there are problems in the data and you'll know when, uh, when an issue happens, you'll know where to go to fix that data and to do the, um, the survey yourself if you have to. So I encourage you to not just, uh, go look on the Esri website for random data, but to find some that are interesting to you locally. Um, so for example, let's see if I can move this bar. There we go. I found this, uh, this tool for uh, Minneapolis that um, tells you uh, if it's gonna be worthwhile to set up solar on your house. And they emailed me, they emailed about this several months ago and uh, it looked really interesting because when you zoom in, there's outlines here and um, there's data somewhere in the depths of this web app that know where the building footprints are. And if you click on one of these, you can see that the outline of the building is there and that's pretty interesting. And then the other more interesting thing is that when you click on it, it has an address. And so um, this is becoming quickly a very interesting data set that has both building geometries and uh, building address. Um, let's see, I think I also noticed, yeah, so this is a, uh, I feel like I, oh, maybe I discovered this after. Anyway, um, so this, this piqued my interest and, um, uh, made me start investigating how to get this data. So looking around on the Minneapolis website and um, uh, kind of looking at their open data portal and on the, the Esri um, hub website, I wasn't able to find this data. But one trick that you can do, if you see a, a, a website that's hosted by arcjs.com, or if it looks like a, an Esri uh, hosted service, if you, open up the, there we go. If you open up the network um, tab in your browser, you'll see a bunch of requests coming through, one of which, or several of which in this case, are for queries to an, a service. And if you copy everything that is before the feature server here, including the feature server, and put that in your URL bar, you'll find um, a nice way to get at the data that's behind this map. Um, so usually, I, this one was pretty simple, but usually you kind of have to poke around and look for uh, servers that are like, there's multiple servers and you have to uh, find the right one and all that stuff. So if you, uh, stick to it, you'll find the, the data that you're interested in. Um, and then um, you can get similar to information to what I was talking about before on that um, Esri Hub website. So if you click on one of these layers, you can see that it's a polygon, that's interesting. You can see the fields down here uh, telling me that there's a an address uh, associated with it. There's even a year built. There is a, um, this use description, uh, as I looked, poked through this data previously, tells me that it's a, a residential building or a house or, what, or a garage or whatnot. And so this is a particularly interesting web uh, data set for me as somebody who wants to bring this data into OpenStreetMap. I can imagine how a lot of these fields would get translated into OpenStreetMap data and it would be worth my time going through the process of adding this data. Um, there, there's all these other things here that we can just basically throw out. They're not interesting. Um, things like the, the pin number for the parcel 
um, that's not interesting. There's some other, like the symbol is, is not interesting. So um, the, the stuff that is interesting is very interesting. And so um, I'm gonna download this data and, and use it uh, to try to do an import, let's say. So um, there's a tool that I, that I wrote actually to do this. Um, is read dump, is that what it's called? Nope. Sorry, I had this tab open and then it closed on me. There it is. So um, this is a tool uh, that looks at that URL that I talked about before and downloads it to a GeoJSON file. And um, that GeoJSON file can then be opened in JOSM, the, the Java OSM editor, and used as a, a source for imports into OpenStreetMap. Um, you can also use a tool called um, OGR to OSM. Let's see if that's on here. There it is. Um, so OGR to OSM takes um, any OGR data source. So things like shapefiles or GeoJSON, or I, I think this will even download from a, um, an Esri endpoint that I was like one of these uh, Esri layers and output OpenStreetMap data. And while it's doing that, it will apply a tag transformation. Um, I think uh, I would probably talk more about this, but I don't wanna spend two hours of everybody's time. I'll just spend an hour of everybody's time. So basically the output of this is an OSM file that you can then manipulate and, uh, and modify so that it's useful to import. Um, let me see if I have that prepared file because that's what I was trying to do earlier. Of course not. That's a bummer. Okay, so um, so um, instead of, of doing the uh, OGR to OSM path, I'm gonna open up that GeoJSON file in QGIS which is a desktop GIS application. And um, it's gonna let me modify and, and query the data that's uh, in that GeoJSON file that I exported from the Esri layer and use that to manipulate data so that it's easier to import into OpenStreetMap basically. So, um, I, there's, there were two layers. There's a not suitable and a suitable layer. Um, and I'm only showing the not suitable now, one now, just because it's easier to do. Um, but when, I'm, when I would do this in, in uh, real life, I would probably merge those two things together and, and consider them as one data set. Um, so let's look at this data real quick here. So, oh, wow, that's cool. So um, what I would do is kind of poke around at this data and understand what the attributes mean and which ones are interesting and useful. So for example, um, the fact that symbol name here is a building, that's interesting and would be useful as part of doing a conversion. Um, there's the address here. Unfortunately, so this is another um, thing that we have to keep in mind when, we, when we're doing imports. Um, OpenStreetMap wants to see a address where the street is entirely expanded. And so that's something we would wanna keep an eye on. Um, uh, and this is, uh, is not expanded. So that the AVE should be Avenue and SE should be Southeast, for example. And it should also be in title case and et cetera, et cetera. So 
um, there's a lot of work here to be done uh, before we can convert it to OpenStreetMap data. So uh, this is kind of where it gets technical. Um, there's all sorts of tools that we could use to find and replace. We could import this into a, a spatial database and, and do some queries to, um, to clean this data up so that it's useful. And I'm not going to go through that right now, but basically um, there's lots of ways that you could do this. And um, whatever you're most comfortable with is probably the way that works best for you. The, the goal though is to output data that uh, is as close to OpenStreetMap useful as possible. So for example, um, oh man, when I was doing this, I was doing it on a faster computer. Um, I might, uh, eh, never mind. Okay, so so the, the point is that you're, once you have the data, whether that's by downloading through Esri, uh, talking to a local government, you are the local government and want to import this and you have it in your hand, um, the, the goal is to um, convert that data into OpenStreetMap tags and imagine how that data would be useful to OpenStreetMap, removing everything that's not useful. Um, one thing that I'm, I, I that I kind of wanted to point out was that um, I'm deliberately not talking to a whole lot of OpenStreetMap people yet, and in this process that I'm talking about, mostly because um, there's kind of a, it's it's useful to get feedback, but it's also important that you um, have a plan in your head before you go and propose something. So you don't want to uh, go and propose an import for data that's just not gonna work. So for example, that layer that I pointed out earlier, um, where, where you said buildings, yeah, this one here, right? Yes, so this is an address layer, for example. Um, that's not a good example. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is you want to have some rough idea about how you're gonna go about doing this import before you go and solicit feedback. And you wanna have uh, something to show the, the people giving feedback um, as an OpenStreetMap file, OpenStreetMap XML file, so that the people who are going to be giving you feedback can look at it in their OpenStreetMap tools and see the output that, that would be generated. On the other hand, you don't want to go through the whole process of doing all this conversion and data cleaning uh, and converting uh, tens of gigabytes or like tens of megabytes of data over to OpenStreetMap format and then show your work. You want to try to cut off a small piece of it to show as an example and get feedback on that so that you can work on your process for the rest of the data set. Um, so I, I think that's kind of a, like you have to kind of play that by ear to figure out what's going on there. Um, Maggie, what's up? How, how, I need to stop, don't I? We're at the nine minute mark and there's okay. a lot of questions in the chat. All right, so let, let me, I'm gonna quickly whirl through here. Um, do, do, do. So I, I think as you can see, um, the process of doing an import is a lot of work. You shouldn't let that uh, scare you away though. It should be a, something that, um, that it, so anybody can do it. And um, all it takes is stick to itiveness. Is that the right word? And, and, the, and your time basically. And um, persistence, I guess is a better way of saying it. Um, you want to get people excited about it. You want to improve OpenStreetMap data with data that other people have already spent a ton of time on, and that's what an import is. And I think um, it's it's totally worth whatever time you have uh, to do it. So I think that um, 
hopefully that's that's helpful. I, I was originally hoping to do more technical work here, and I think that it's probably more interesting to do the, the higher level stuff. So um, having said that, let's talk about questions so that we can hit more of the high level stuff. And I can do a more technical deep dive into doing import stuff later. How about that? We can always have you back for part two. That's right. Um, all right, how about questions? Can you raise your hand? I think there's 21 of us, so. I'm gonna look through the chat too. So, um, I see a thumbs up. Maggie, how do I call on people? Uh, well, I, I was just going to jump in and say, as long as you're looking at the chat, and something you didn't mention is um, to assure that the coordinate system that your data are coming from matches that of uh, OpenStreetMap, either, either WGS84 or, as Kevin mentioned in the chat, NAD83 is, is close enough, but NAD27 is not. And there's some simple tools and, and, and our OSM wiki that tell you how to do this. I find the Ogre to Ogre tools to be pretty straightforward and easy to use, and they, they run on virtually any operating system. But it's really important to get the coordinate system correct. Yes, that's a very good point. And um, the reason I didn't mention that is because a lot of the tools that I was thinking about um, do that for you kind of magically. Um, so I can. Uh, it is definitely something to keep in mind though, because if you if it doesn't work, your data is going to be in the wrong spots. And it's usually off by just a little bit. And that can be very frustrating, especially when you're trying to merge with OpenStreetMap. Um, Brian DeRocher asked, um, did you happen to import all the mailboxes he recently mentioned on Twitter? Um, so I did not. And um, the reason for that is that this is a good example of why you might not want to import data, um, th where the source data is much, much worse than OpenStreetMap. That would be a, a time when you don't want to import data into OpenStreetMap. So for example, um, Brian's talking about, um, I, I went and scraped the US Postal Service uh, blue box collection boxes data, and that would be an interesting thing to import into OpenStreetMap. However, uh, the data is very spotty in its accuracy. And so there's some uh, collection boxes that are in the middle of the street, some that are uh, all piled on top of one another and not useful. So when you're looking for data import, you wanna make sure that you're using data that's not gonna be a ton of work to correct, basically. Um, usually OpenStreetMap has really high uh, expectations for accuracy and it'll be obvious when it's not the same level of accuracy. 